Hello again. This video will be a deep dive on Fontainebleau, France exclusively, exploring the idea that some of these lumpy boulders are potentially large remnants of some type of creature or many creatures, and we will explore that hypothesis. Make any comments? Okay, um, to start off first, let's uh, just do a, a quick general look at the landscape. Here we have a 360 photo, just a few random zooms here, scroll around and look at the boulders, just give you a feel for the place. Nothing super interesting here, just a look at the rocks. Okay, cool. And then a nice pan here, a decent look at the general look of the rocks. And it's kind of grainy, but you see all the, the holes and the warps and the contours. So um, just so you know, it's not all photoshopped. This is what the rocks really look like. They're kind of scalloped and grooved in interesting ways. So it's basically just boulders and trees over a pretty large area, kind of warped looking. Nice fly over here. Um, no real comments on these images, just giving you a general feel for the area real quick. So just landscapes of boulders. You can see it's kind of looking a little melty and um, uh, flowy. Uh, another look here. This uh, cliffside or uh, platform of stone near the cliffside, presumably natural. Okay. Just uh, flowing boulders make, uh, making up the ground. Uh, forest surrounding area, a bunch of boulders and chisel boulders. So once again, just getting you acquainted with the area and what it looks like. Oh, and it's a very well, um, uh, it's well known for rock climbing. It's a great rock climbing destination apparently because of all the interesting boulders. So I got a lot of these images from uh, rock climbing YouTube videos, incidentally. Okay, and just a couple more images here, starting to see some of the, the weird, uh, or at least uh, uh, quirky rock shapes. And here's a good one here. You see the lumpy nature of it, or almost skin-like or flesh-like um, here as well and some interesting grooves and contours, kind of random looking, and uh, easy to see how this could be 100% natural, so I have to acknowledge that just right out of the gate. And, yep, blah blah, so rock climbing, and creases and grooves and stuff. We'll talk about all of that Okay, there's some man-made stuff here as well in the area, like uh, paintings and some grottos and uh, uh, grave sites and stuff like that. Um, and Okay, um, <laughs> so far this video is really boring, but I'm just giving you a general tour of the area real quick before we jump into some uh, interesting... Um, details, interesting images. Okay, and good look here at the, the lumpy nature of the rock, which is presumed to be natural. And the general idea with this video is that some of these rocks look like critters, and we, ch we touched on it uh, in the previous video of large biology. And obviously some of these somewhat reminiscent of Heads. This one obviously looks like an elephant, and yeah, blah blah blah. Um, so I think to save you some time, I'll make my main point of the video now, uh, my heavy commentary. So um, the 
what I would say is that um, even if it is creatures, there is some type of artificial warping that has been um, conducted here in the area on all these stones and possibly in the, the native stone underneath all of this as well, um, like the bedrock even. So if these are comprised of uh, body parts of creatures, then uh, I, I'm going to make the case based on some examples I'll show that it's not a simple uh, turn to stone and then they start eroding. It's more like something is derpify excuse me, derpifying or um, making strange uh, variations and modulations to whatever it's uh, petrifying, if there's even an animal uh, involved at all. So I am actually going to say I find it um, almost even more likely that uh, a lot of these animal shapes are just um, completely artificial, but they're uh, made to deceptively look like they may have been elephants, just as one, one more layer in the uh, big bewilderment protocol. So uh, it definitely would not surprise me if this is all just arbitrary warping with um, a component of um, biomorphism involved in the algorithm. So in other words, uh, something's just making silly patterns in stone and then uh, involved in that um, process is uh, an ingredient of um, uh, anthropomorphism or uh, facial features, biological features, limbs and uh, animal shapes and stuff. So th those are used as raw material in the algorithm to generate these weird patterns. So these, these rocks are designed specifically to, to straddle a line between could be this, could be that. Um, so it could be animal, could be petrified, could be natural, blah, 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 kind of like I've talked about before. And just kind of scrolling around now at random through these images, but let's take a good look at each of these. So this one obviously looking like a big head, uh, could be, and eye, eye, mouth, nose, you see the, the size of it compared to this kid. This one not looking like a head so much, possibly a, a super tweaked out head, but not necessarily a head. This one obviously kind of looking like a tortoise, like this, this eye socket and this slit nose kind of, and we see the slit feature kind of continuing up and down and possible mouth here. Um, hmm. Another one that's similar to a tortoise or some type of amphibian possibly. Uh, kind of lumpy top of the head here and then these eye sockets potentially, the nose, the mouth. Again it's pretty uncanny a lot of this stuff, just the, uh, the morphological resemblance to uh, to faces and uh, body shapes. So this one, not quite as strong, but um, possible eye there and possible like snout here, kind of like a squarish snout and then this line uh, as a groove for the mouth. Similar thing here is supposed to look like a, a turtle head or something like that with the eye and the eye and the nose and the mouth. Uh, this looking I guess you could say it looks like multiple things, but it kind of looks like a snake head to me. And what I'm saying is this is all calculated. So from the look of the uh, alleged fangs here, or um, what, what could potentially be perceived as fangs, or just drooping skin, or like a lower jaw, this line right here, or groove, um, all of these uh, grooves here or slits or uh, contours, the, the texture of the rock. So this is all calculated in a very particular way, not at random, but um, quasi-random, like a little random. And then um, mostly it's intended to reside in this weird middle space, I think, of um, uh, like looking like it could be a cobra head or something like that, or uh, also looking like it could have 
been a natural rock that just naturally eroded into this pattern somehow. But uh, the I'm saying all of every single crease and um, feature may be uh, very calculated by um, by super algorithm and super computers and all that. So just keep that in mind as a possibility. It's possible that this is an actual creature, but seeing as it's like all tweaked out, I don't think that it uh, it was only an actual animal and then it was petrified and left at that. I think it was warped with some type of artificial technology. And also the, the other, there's plenty of other rocks in the area which resemble this to a degree like similar features but it doesn't have the biological aspect like a lot of the rocks in the area so um, I think only some of the um, or the the algorithm only uses a percentage of biomorphism in its uh, exploits so as it's crafting the landscape it says, hey, let's make here, here, and here look somewhat biological. So, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's simultaneously both advanced, an advanced tactic and uh, a very simple um, oldest trick in the book type of tactic. Like, you um, just make things look like things that they aren't, <laughs> right? Uh, it's a pretty simple tactic. Just make things, make everything look like something it's not. I mean, it's basically the definition of deception. So when we see something that looks like a petrified something, uh, you might want to just think twice before uh, we go off the appearance alone, you know? So this one looking kind of like a snake head with the, the eyes here, or the eye sockets here. So, yeah, again, what I'm saying is these these holes are strategically placed in the rock as the rock is created or crafted or sculpted to make it look like it might be biological faces or uh, to resemble biological uh, organisms, whether or not uh, it does a very good job of it. Um, so here, kind of almost looking like some type of long skulled critter obviously very large, uh, with this, the mouth and the, the snout, so, uh, yeah, warpy, warpy, uh, stone, which is made to look like animals, is the cliff notes for this video. So here we have an elephant, note the, the flappy looking skin, so I don't think this is natural, and, uh, here's another good look, this one is not photoshopped, we have, some, some of them I suspect are photoshopped, but, a lot of them we have multiple angles, so uh, this one, it's uh, resembling an elephant, and again, I think it would surprise me more if this was an actual biological organism than if it were made to look like an elephant. Um, okay. So... Warpy. Uh, this is the back side of that elephant, and certainly could be natural, I guess, but it would be an interesting look to it. This is a different rock, but it also kind of resembles an elephant, I would say. And just, we have a, a interesting look at the texture, and the, uh, the cavities or holes, and this nice blob here, which we wouldn't know what that is. Uh, forehead, maybe. Another one here. See, this is like a cheekbone almost, like right here. And then the, the crown of the head. Uh, this is, I guess, uh, yet another rock that kind of looks like an elephant or similar. And like possibly like the ear hole or the ear cavity. So if if this was an actual creature, then I think some type of uh, heavy warping, uh, like, uh, uh, sorry, some type of heavy warping uh, algorithm was used, or process was used on it. So like, um, 
it was modified beyond recognition, say, 30% rather than 100%. So it still retains many of its elf, uh, elephant qualities, if that's what happened. So here's, an, here's one which I would say doesn't particularly look like any organism. Like maybe a snail, I guess you could make that case, or a slug or something. Uh, but uh, yeah, you see how it's not, it's obviously not an exact snail. It could be anything, including natural. <laughs> um, and then this kind of looking like mushrooms. This, I don't know, but these almost looking like teeth and um, some type of serrated look to it and just very interesting quasi anthropomorphic or biomorphic features possible like eye like brow ridge here for an eye so there's a lot of that uh, brow ridge pattern so either it's from an actual creature or it's uh, like included like baked into the algorithm, like just throw some uh, very particular biological contours in there and just to make the rocks look mysterious. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if these weren't actual teeth, but just like mimicked teeth or moreover um, uh, partially intended to look like teeth, like teeth-like, but not too teeth-like. Okay, uh, a lot of holes and cavities, um, and a good look at the, the creases in the rock, the surface texture. The surface texture could be natural, certainly. I do think it's artificial, I'm going to say that. Um, it's just my opinion. Um, okay. This one kind of looks like a giant skull it's in this rock climbing video. So I took a couple of screenshots and we kind of see here like something resembling like a nose, maybe, maybe like the, the, uh, the brow ridge or the eye, the forehead or something like that, the eye socket here and um, sinus cavity or something like that, maybe the mouth. And then over here, like the ear even, or um, some type of skull, uh, skull bone or ear bone or something like that. I'm not particularly well versed in anatomy, but you kind of get the idea. And it's definitely looking to me like it has a biological appearance. And I think I've already made the point I want to make on that. So biological or not, that's up for debate, but it appears to have, um, to be too coincidental to just be natural features, at least from this angle, I'm saying. Like, imagine if you took a, a natural boulder about this size and shape, and then you, um, you typed into your computer, make this rock 15% like a head, like 15% looking like a head, and then it might spit out something like this. So, or, or you know, like a skull or a helmet, or make this look like 10% like a skull and 10% like a helmet, and it'll spit out some gibberish like this. You know what I mean? Um, so again, that weird middle space is uh, part of the uh, process of bewildering. Okay, so let's move on to some which are potentially photoshopped. I think uh, many of these images are actually not very reliable. Uh, because, like that one, um, because I found some of them on a, a blog. I did a reverse a reverse image search for some of these, like trying to figure out where they came from, and also trying to find video of some of these, but a lot of them I couldn't find a second image. And the area is pretty large, like miles and miles. It might take you years or even decades to catalog all the boulders, so it's not particularly reasonable to ask uh, or to expect uh, multiple angles and video footage of every single one of these examples. Um, hopefully eventually maybe we'll have that, but 
at this point, really all that, all that matters is the big picture to me, so I wouldn't waste my time. But anyways, um, uh, okay. So I think just in some of these images, like a few minor details have been added. Uh, so we have to be careful about which images we choose to analyze. But I think some of the stuff, like maybe this, this line here, and then these eyes have been added, and then maybe just a little bit of warping. This is generally like what the rock looks like in the area. So uh, this could be legit, but um, I don't know, something about the, the rocks looks a little corny to me, or I mean the holes. Right here, similar weirdness. Um, it, again, it wouldn't surprise me if this is real, but uh, some of these grooves may be actually there, some of these strange curves and stuff. These two just look like they may have been added as uh, eyes, like in Photoshop or something like that, or to look like eyes. But again, this is like halfway between a, a Tetris block and a, or like a Lego block and a um, cartoon drawing of a snake and an actual snake. <laughs> so this is, again, a weird feature salad that, uh, in this particular area, for whatever reason, has a biological look to it. So, if if this image is mostly legit, I think that's what's going on. Okay, and then same thing here. These eyes kind of look photoshopped, and then this comical mouth um, kind of looks real, kind of looks somewhat photoshopped. I have a tough time saying, but uh, this definitely looks real right there, but hard to say. And then this. So these nice creases right here, these are like um, like 10% uh, megalithic like. So th like this, follow this contour right here, like that, and this right here, and this crease. So this is like made to look five or 10% um, block like, like a block wall. So from here to here roughly, it's uh, it resembles uh, a little bit a brick wall or a block, like a wall made of stone blocks. Um, so keep that in mind. I've, again, pattern soup, pattern salad. There's a whole bunch of that going on. This obviously looks like a flat head of a snake or something similar. And these presumably, these holes looking like nostrils or potentially eyes, but I would say nostrils more likely. Um, they just look a little too perfect to me. Or they could be modern additions, like some artist came along and just put nostrils there just because it kind of looks like a snake. Um, but first of all, the shape of the rock is very interesting, just flat look here. But again, I'm saying it's probably gibberish and then the rest maybe Photoshop on these or maybe not. This one, there are knobs and weird protrusions protrusions that stick out from the stone like this, just weird uh, knobs and stuff. But uh, this one in particular just looks a little bit too much like a, some type of stegosaurus or like dinosaur, like the, the contour of the eyes. Like this is looking a lot like a, a forehead or a brow ridge and the eye here and uh, some like spines on the side of the mouth and nice little uh, snout, so looking like some type of big uh, club-tailed dinosaur or something similar. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if this is like a natural rock, which is shaped more like a little more clumsily, and then somebody came along and like tweaked it a little bit, just like nudged little areas of it to make it look more, uh, more like a particular critter. So I regret not being able to verify this image but uh, I'm right here, whoops, right here looking kind of like a, a nice cheekbone. And then once again, possibly just a, uh, a gibberish pattern uh, artificially crafted in the stone. Uh, this one, I actually don't think this is Photoshop. It's just the eye made me uh, question it. Like the, it's kind of like almost like a sad or melancholy eye with a nice little, uh, some nice organic contours to it. Uh, 
looking like a, a snout or a lip of some kind, like a walrus maybe or a dolphin. Like, you know, have you ever seen an elephant seal has kind of a snout like this? And then here would be the mouth and cheekbone and stuff. So it does look very uncanny as a, a creature face. Uh, it should be considered to, or compared to this also. So like here we have a, a groove and then a possible nose and a possible mouth. And I'm saying these uh, holes and creases and knobs or blobs are strategically um, generated to look like they are kind of face-like when they're not actually faces. So that may be the case with this guy. Uh, it's hard to make out his, his eye. Like I think it would be right here or so, but uh, in the previous image, this is just another angle of that same photo. Uh, previous image, it just, I don't know, I was suspecting that this might be photoshopped, the, just the eye part and maybe some, some nudging and smudging just to make it a little bit more animal-like. But in the next image, we, we see that most of the stuff is pretty much the same. It's just different lighting. The, the mouth looks in the same spot and so, uh, do I think this is an actual creature? It wouldn't surprise me if it is, but if it is, it's heavily modified. And we can see like the, the rest of it, like, uh, like this area here and underneath it. So I'm gonna go out on a limb, so to speak. Forgive the uh, hackneyed expression, but uh, I'm gonna say that even these layers beneath are not natural, but rather part of the weird warped artificial configuring of the rock which happened who knows when you know whenever okay this is obviously looking quite a bit like a feline skull uh, or head even possibly complete with the skin still just the look of that that's looking like a foramen or fossa uh, right here as well some type of hole or cavity in the sinuses or, or eye, eye hole. So definitely just anatomically looking quite a bit like a, a cat or a dog skull or something similar. Um, and especially the groove here, the mouth. Okay, so it could be photoshopped for sure. I, I'll say that like a, a blend of a, a cat skull and the boulder Older and then some smudging or whatever Photoshop ex experts do. Like maybe the, the boulder looked more like this one in the background and then someone came along and uh, averaged it with a cat face more or less. So uh, it's possible. Again, it's frustrating not to be able to just stand there and, and touch it and walk around it and, and know for sure. Um, and then this one, very similar story, uh, this contour here, this one looking like kind of a, a little bit more like a dog or like a, I don't know, I can't remember the, the dog breed name, like a schnauzer or something, I think that's the wrong one, but like a short faced dog with a, like the nose here and then the jowls or whatever. And the, the emphasized dark spot right here made me think it was like photoshopped to make it more eye-like you know just like an eyeball but that would be a pretty tiny eye so again if this is a legit image I think we're dealing with gibberish which is quasi biological by design and then this looking obviously like a turtle somewhat with this line which hints at a shell but may not be this thing which Inside an eye, but may not be this groove here, which happens to be um, right where the mouth of a turtle would be, but yet it looks like a natural groove. So again, the the overlap or the uh, the strategic placement of these features um, to uh, to generate a particular type of interpretation or to hint at a particular type of interpretation. Or many interpretations um, as a way of bewildering and then along the Photoshop um, line of discussion yeah it looks like the, the hole may be added or emphasized possibly I guess it wouldn't be too hard to uh, add in some of these features or nudge and smudge them a little bit so similar thing here uh, a lot of 
uh, holes which are strategically placed where eyes might be uh, in a critter. Um, and then these lines and grooves are reminiscent of mouths. But again, it's just like a big blur or blob of biology. Like, I don't know if you can imagine in like some cartoon TV show where you aim a, a nonsense weapon at someone or like at your dog or something and it just turns into this weird blob when it gets hit with the beam. So this is like a weird blob of nearly biological stuff. And uh, same same deal here. So the, the eye looking suspiciously placed, possible nostril there, these contours where a mouth might be, nasal cavity, and the, the general contours of the rock and the, the skin-like appearance of it. I'm saying that's all strategic. And similar thing here, if that's even a legit image. Again, some some warping and stuff maybe uh, at play here. This one, uh, just the whole, looks pretty real, but just the placement is a little awkward or looks biological, almost like a whale head or something like that. And then some possible big nostrils here, jaw or uh, jawline. This one kind of resembling a toad or something. We can compare it to stuff in the background. Just big uh, gibberish muffins, some of which look fairly biological. Um, just per the parameters of whatever algorithm is used to shape all this. Um, so the, everything down to the these creases and this fairly brow looking um, feature here, like a brow ridge or eyebrow or something like that. Uh, like the top of a skull, this kind of resembles that, but not too much. And then, okay, I'm repeating myself quite a bit now. And then some of this stuff may be added in Photoshop, but the, the lichen looks pretty natural, seems to follow these creases. And uh, who knows, this one, uh, just got to me because the uh, this looks so much like an eyebrow or brow ridge and the eyelid and eye cavity. It's just almost too perfect. And then we have a, a matching one over here. So like either this was an actual creature or it's uh, photoshopped or it's made to look like it may have been an actual creature uh, deceptively. And then this groove right here, we're going to see plenty of these grooves, just kind of ar arbitrary uh, gibberish grooves and the um, the evidence for the uh, deceptive uh, argument I haven't presented all of that just yet um, uh, for this fountain blue forest area because there's uh, I'm going to show a bunch of holes and grooves which are not biological looking so those I think we are meant to cross reference with stuff like this in order to come to the conclusion um, that uh, the grooves themselves, the grooves and holes and contours are all uh, poppycock or uh, nonsense or um, contrived. So yeah, this one, just this hole looked a little photoshopped to me, kind of a knobbly wobbly snout. Um, this one, this looked a little fakish to me and some of the coloring and blurring maybe. I don't know, just a subjective feel that kind of looks like maybe this part was added or embellished. So who knows really. This one looking like some type of small mammal maybe. Um, like this part right here looking uh, and this right here like a, a groove behind the head. Some of this may have been smeared with Photoshop or enhanced or whatever this as well, this eye. Uh, but this is the general look of the stone, so it's, for the most part, this is probably a, a legit image, most of these. Similar thing here, just maybe the the whole, just uh, a little weird. See, this is, again, one which doesn't look particularly like any animal. Um, 
whether known or unknown, like we could imagine any number of undiscovered or past species that this could resemble, but um, I think this is more just like a, a blob, uh, which has 10% biological features. Okay, try and burn through these a little bit quicker. Same, same deal with this nostril here, or eye, whatever it may be. Possible Photoshop. Possible Photoshop, a little snaggle tooth here. This may all be legit, because there's plenty of these deep holes just kind of abruptly in the stone, so I think a lot of those holes are artificial. Uh, but I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here and say, you know, maybe some of these images are Photoshop. Um, this one is a pretty cool one, actually. Uh, the contours of the snout area, obviously looking like some type of dragon or maybe mammal. Just this nice little eye cavity here, brow ridge and sinus cavity, I guess, and the cheekbone and the, kind of like a skull type look to it. So, and then these grooves down here, and of course the skin-like look to it. So, my least likely hypothesis is that this is naturally formed like this. Uh, and then I guess my second most likely uh, hypothesis would be that either natural stone, I'm sorry, uh, that these were large animals that were petrified and then warped, then I, get, I think my first most likely hypothesis is that um, either natural stone or actual animals were um, warped beyond recognition into something that they're not. Um, like, so maybe actual animals weren't even used. Okay. Sorry, I feel like I get a little long-winded sometimes. I still have like 150 more images. <laughs> so hang in there. And then last but not, neat, not least on the photoshopped angle, this one, I can't say there's any particular feature on this that looks fake. It's just, it looks too much like a bird skull or dragon skull to, um, to take too seriously. Um, so again, maybe someone took the texture of the rock and applied it to an actual image of a vulture skull or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, these lines along the, the beak or what would be the beak or snout, uh, this ridge along the eyebrow, these contours above the eyes, of course, the cavity here for the, the eye and the, uh, the ocular nerve or whatever. Possible tooth here. So all the previous comments apply to this one. Okay, so let's look at some generally warped looking stone, which is not necessarily biological looking. So I think this will help us tease out what's actually going on in this area. So again, plenty of warpy features, which here, at least on this boulder, are not seeming to add up to any coherent picture of an animal, just kind of random features. And I, for the most part, I think that's what most of the boulders look like. I think the, uh, the petrified animal look, or the animal look to, the, to some of the boulders is the exception rather than the rule for this place. Not that the most of the boulders don't look weird in general, because uh, they do, but I think most of them do not have the uh, biological look to them. It's just some of them do. Even so, I'm thinking that some of these grooves and curves are all contrived and artificial, just like mimicked natural patterns combined with natural erosion since their creation, you know, whenever that was. But. Uh, just a general look at some warped patterns here, like these, these stacked, kind of uh, spongy or uh, porous uh, blobs, more or less. You could look at these. And yeah, these I could envision being natural, except for some of the uh, corroborating 
or uh, circumstantial evidence on some of the other boulders. So this one, obviously, same deal. Just uh, warped and spongy looking. Okay. This one actually seeming to look like a face. Maybe photoshopped, but uh, there are plenty of these cavities and just random holes like this. So, and this is kind of uh, interestingly positioned to look like a nasal uh, bone or something like that. So, uh, whatever's. This one, just a general look at the texture of the rock and not resembling a creature, but having a lot of that uh, morphic or curvy, contoury, um, like this right here, if you just take that for an example, it's kind of like uh, similar to an eye socket and similar to an eyebrow, you know, similar to any number of biological features. So we're, it's, this is like an advanced uh, 3D synthesis that's creating and crafting these rocks, I think. Um, for bewilderment, possibly. Okay, and then this one, similar story. Um, got all these grooves, not really seeming to add up to any particular animal, for sure. So that's why I think it's just a, an overall gibberish pattern, which happens to use animals as one ingredient in the gibberish. Um, so, let's see here. Looking for any particular features that jump out at me, but just kind of miscellany, miscellaneous holes and I could envision it being natural, except for all the other ones that uh, have more more stark weirdness going on, some of which I haven't shown yet. This one obviously could be natural, um, just kind of knobby and blobby with a nice stark hole there. See, this hole is a little abrupt to me, uh, the, the roundness of it, and... Um, it just strikes me as artificial, like almost like a clue. This one, almost like a snout, kind of biological, but just with random grooves here and miscellaneous features applied, I would say. Again, similar story here, like these contours, it's like uh, riffing on what animals look like in a uh, 3D visual sense. So uh, it's like Google's deep dream, like a, a dreamy uh, animal scape. Um, so this is an example of warped looking stone, which is has some of the features of the biological stuff, but doesn't seem to add up to any particular animal. So I'm, I'm thinking this was not created for, by petrifying an actual animal. I'm thinking it's just gibberish. Same thing here. I mean, I guess you could make a case that this was like a snail or some like a neck and a head or something, um, but just kind of gibberish. Similar thing there. Even this groove here, I would say, is just strategic gibberish and everything down to the contours and the flows of the Skin is, uh, in my opinion, algorithm generated. Uh, this guy right here, interesting boulder. Uh, again, very warpy, like miscellaneously warped, but not in a 100% uh, random way, rather in a uh, strategic, uh, semi-random way with uh, some very particular curves and contours and features injected into it in order to achieve an overall effect for the area and as a subagenda for the whole earth and the earth environment. Okay, so similar story here, just uh, curves, contours, holes, um, looking fairly natural on its own, you know, could be um, some, some stark uh, or prominent uh, contours here in the middle. One wonders whether that's like volcanic or something, or um, natural water erosion or something like that. 
or whether uh, I would say whether it's artificially crafted that way. Okay. Uh, let's move on. This one, nothing really to say, just more of the same warpy, smooth contours and holes, abrupt holes. Some holes are more abrupt than others, as you will see. This one is like a standalone, uh, nice little rock, uh, almost like a mushroom or, uh, again, just a nothing burger, in my opinion. Um, another angle for it here. Uh, so this doesn't resemble a creature to me, but it, it has a similar look to some of the rocks which do resemble creatures. Um, so I think we're meant to deduce that we're not dealing with actual creatures. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not so confident in, in my deduction abilities. And then of course the, the rock on the ground itself wouldn't surprise me if the entire landscape is warped. I mean, obviously we've seen tons of weird lines on the surface and uh, so not just the, the surface and the, the boulders here, but the, uh, the underlying rock may have a similar origin story to it. This one kind of looking almost like, what's that, what's that Johnny Depp movie where he's a gecko or something? Like um, Rango or something like that? I think that it, I think that's it. Something, yeah, with, with that movie gecko with the exaggerated head. That's kind of what this looks like with the exaggerated mouth line and the, the derpified prominent chin and weird eyes and uh, exaggerated forehead area. So again, this is like cartoon feature salad to me. And this I think is a different, um, different boulder but some interesting stuff going on with this one. Okay, so uh, this area right here mostly. So let's zoom in, get a better look at this. We see some straight lines here. Unless I'm cherry picking or seeing something that's not there. And then right here, see right here, from here to here, there's more or less a, uh, a straight crease there. So Again, the idea of gibberish salad with clues left in to uh, alert us to the true story behind it. <clears throat> See, like, th if this is a biological creature, then what is this uh, arbitrary angular um, feature back here and this nice linear ridge here? It's not seeming like an organic feature to me. And then... Um, the rest of it, I guess just the, the awkward creases and the knobby blobular look to it. I've probably, <laughs> take a shot every time I say the word gibberish or soup <laughs> or feature, <laughs> you'll be so drunk. Uh, I, I've probably said um, the same explanation like 50 times already, but anyways. Uh, Okay, this, I mean, basically the same thing. I guess no real reason to comment. So let's move on. This, similar stuff. Sorry, got scroll happy there. Uh, just arbitrary ledges and contours. This one, uh, a lot of protrusions and abrupt like ridges and uh, ledges. So we'll take, and even this crest right here has kind of an abrupt line right there. So, uh, and some creases like these, possible little tick mark thingies. This is another one which is like 12% creature-like, but mostly just a nonsensical muffin of rock. Uh, could be natural, I suppose. I don't know. This, here we're starting to see some of these um, more blatant creases, uh, just a little bit faint indication of it. Uh, these grooves here along the side, and then the shaping of it, just looking awkwardly shaped. Awesome. And again, here's the idea of this uh, abrupt underside or ledge or edge of some of these rocks. 
almost like it got smushed up against something. Uh, but rather than having actually been molten rock, which was smushed up against something, I think the the aesthetic of being smushed up against something is just uh, something which is used as one ingredient to add into the mix of the algorithm which shapes these. So, um, so it's mimicked uh, pancaking, or that's not the right word, uh, mimicked smushy face rather than an actual smushy face. <clears throat> Potentially. This one, uh, this cr uh, crease or groove or cavity right here, this uh, almond-shaped or vagina-shaped um, like teardrop hole right here. And yeah, one could imagine this being like a, a four-legged critter or something like that. Possible elephant, another one. Um, but it's too ambiguous to, to really say anything with confidence, like any critter uh, hole here. So again, feature soup, in my opinion. Bewilderment devices. Okay, and this one looking quite a bit like an elephant or mammoth. And uh, we see the contours, the people for scale. And this, uh, uh, texture here is more uh, grainy than lumpy or more um, almost more like here's the the more uh, lumpy look and here's the more linear or uh, flowy look just different uh, different aspects here almost looking like a different like uh, mix between those two and uh, possible brow ridge features and stuff interesting okay and then this is one I would say is, uh, has a lot of the features that this elephant thing or elephant looking thing has, but it's more like 20% more ambiguous um, and less biological. So it's, this is like a, um, a more randomized brow ridge pattern right here, you could say, or, uh, you know, um, forehead pattern or something like that. Then here, I would say this is like an arbitrary uh, cavity here, some of these. And um, again, natural, quite possibly, but I don't know at this point. It's too weird looking. Here's just another angle, a couple angles of the same rock. Like these knobs are reminiscent of like, uh, what, what do you call it, protuberances, protuberance, or like a, uh, I don't know, some type of uh, tuberosity or um, uh, whatever a, a knob on bone is called, like a process maybe, it's, uh, or a protrusion of bone. So these kind of resemble that, but th then again, this doesn't particularly look like a skull or an animal at least from this angle. And this one, yeah, it's uh, just kind of almost looking like a, a lump of gold. Like when you see like a gold nugget that's been plucked out of the ground, kind of looks like this. Like this feature right here is, re is reminiscent of a, an eyebrow and an eye cavity. So, it could just be a random placement of that type of feature. And of course, um, uh, these types of things would emerge naturally to a degree. Uh, it's just whether they would combine to make such uncanny animal looking shapes is um, uh, questionable. Uh, okay, this one. <laughs> almost looking like an animal. Again, the, this, this crease here, likely strategically placed so that it looks somewhat animal-like. And then plenty of big holes like this, like just very large cavities. And stuff like this, even like this little guy right there, 
just a little awkward and see another type of thing here just like a a nice protruding little almost looks like a, a spoon here or something like a flat flattish uh, I don't know a little weird protrusion there and so maybe gibberish similar story there here just an interesting look the uh, this uh, cavity here in this um, neck like feature and then it connects over here uh, looking like there's some type of separation or differentiation of the material possibly who knows uh, but yeah just warpy miscellaneous warpy patterns here's, here's warped patterns that again resemble like possible eye like features possible nasal slits and stuff like that just kind of thrown into the mix uh, somewhat at random similar thing here blah blah okay and then some of the uh, the flat flatter areas just the the bedrock itself or the flat ground area is a little fishy looking to me just subjectively I don't have a particular particularly strong example to point out on this image but just some of the the ridges and flows of rock uh, it's resembling a little bit like the vehicle tracks we've seen you know so just keep in mind that it may be the ground itself may be worked over with the same type of weird artificial technology getting these nice smooth kind of weird contours here and these flat faces could be natural cracks, but like you see this flat face right there. Uh, boy, and like possible weird groove here and here. This could be natural water erosion and natural cracks. Um, I just rather suspect something artificial. Similar deal here. Uh, in this image, we also have just a half decent look at some of these creases here the parallel creases here 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 so I circled them for you um, yeah like right here just parallel creases which could certainly be natural I, I obviously that's a possibility um, again just the spidey sense feeling that it's uh, uh, um, embellishment or like finishing touches or just patterns which are meant to achieve a certain effect okay and then here's more of that here's a different boulder like up close look at those uh, um, linear more or less grooves with the, the holes along them this looks a lot like Uluru Lock I'm sorry Rock Uluru Rock in Australia it's a big, um, or Ayers Rock as it's called, A-Y-E-R-S Rock. Uh, it's got a couple names. Um, it's, that's a much larger scale, but it has a similar look of parallel lines with holes. So it could be a natural erosion pattern. I rather suspect that there's a component of uh, artificiality to it. So I'll leave it at that. And this one, I just wanted to point out, like this in the lower left over here, we've got like this this area right here, like from here to here is almost like a like a walkway almost, and it could be a coincidence, just natural erosion or whatever, but almost like a ten percent attempt at a staircase, maybe a stretch, but I don't know. Okay, and this one, the hole here is kind of abrupt, I would say. And then uh, main thing I want to point out in this image is this interesting cavity here with this uh, ledge or uh, fin of rock, which ends right there. This is kind of like a, a nice fin of rock and then a, a cavity there. It's just a little awkward, potentially artificial. Okay, now we start to get into some more uh, blatant stuff. Uh, 
So this could be natural, I mean, um, eroding layers, differential erosion, whatever. But this is just warpy, like, platform, kind of suspended almost, uh, or uh, cavities on either side of it. Uh, just kind of weird, warpy looking weirdness. And then here, we have some fairly awkward uh, lips of wavy stone. Like, so we see it here. We see it here a second time, and then here a third time. And this is still in Fontaine Blue Forest. Um, so this is, again, one of those features that I would use as circumstantial evidence to evaluate the, uh, the animal-like boulders. So when we see this, I think this the story or uh, explanation for this is um, more contrived. And uh, like I don't think this is a functional component which has been petrified um, or anything like that. Um, for the most part, when we look at these old remnants of sites and these ancient mysterious sites, we're always looking for a function and a, a purpose behind these sites. Like, oh, this what was this weird feature used for? Or, um, you know, and uh, I don't think these necessarily have to have been used for anything. I think they're <laughs> deceptively made to look like they might have been used for something, almost. But I think the ultimate conclusion we have to draw is that um, this is just an arbitrary wave of uh, contrived patterned rock uh, designed to confuse and uh, mislead and provide us with a false sense of context, more or less. So here's another look at that. There's another wave in Australia, uh, a couple, actually, a couple different wave-like uh, formations like this around the world. So you can look that up, like the wave rock formation, if you just Google that, you'll see something similar to this. So obviously could be natural, but just three of them right in a row, I don't know, it's, they're just looking too perfect in a weird way. Um, and obviously some irregularity to it. It's, it doesn't look 100% mechanical. Uh, here we have some little notches here, semi-regular. This image is another one with like a weird fin here. So this dude's climbing this rock and look how awkward this um, lip of rock is. It's like a rail of rock and then a, a vertical cavity or like, like a foot long of um, cavity there, and then, uh, yeah, so just a, a very weird, like, inverted, uh, stone rail type feature. So, boy, it's striking me as, uh, again, just an arbitrary feature just thrown into the mix. And same thing with this hole and stuff like it, even this crease, that crease, potentially natural cracks, but this hole may be just thrown in there to spice up the picture and make it weird looking or achieve whatever effect is trying to be achieved. But this rail gets me in this awkward cavity there. And here, a lot of flappy, foldy things. So, um, like droopy, like drooping rock. And you could make the case that it's from like natural high heat conditions or like during a cataclysm or volcan volcano or something like that. Um, I'm going to say it's just artificial contrived look to it. Uh, again, same thing here. Like you see this droopy flat flap of rock here. Ooh. It's, it's hard for me to say that that's natural, especially with this nice little crisp uh, edge to it there, and then we've got this cavity here, and all these interesting uh, quasi-animalistic um, contours to it, or like somewhat body-like, or uh, like f almost face-like, or uh, biological contours to it, but ultimately just a, a nothing muffin, a big muffin of miscellaneous features, which bewilders and this this flap is just so ridiculous to me
And similar thing here, again, this uh, twisty or um, torqued out stone uh, or portion of stone, it's like a, um, let's see, almost like dough or putty. Um, so in the next image, if you've heard of something called a non-Newtonian fluid, it's like this exotic material in physics, which like, I don't know, it does any number of things. So they'll like, depending on the conditions and the material, it'll like flow uphill or uh, take on these strange shapes, like defy gravity and stuff like that. Um, so I think we're dealing, like when we see features like this, either that's a deliberate feature or it's um, uh, a hallmark of the crafting process or sculpting process like some type of uh, high-tech warping of raw material, like you charge it up with some type of advanced tech and, and then shape it and sculpt it, um, something like that. Uh, or both, I mean, it could be both the, the warping technology and the, uh, it's, and they deliberately leave it, leave it in some type of weird configuration to bewilder, um, yeah, that's a very awkward feature to me, Just morphed rock, and then we have this right here, a spiral, and again, possible morphing of the rock, um, and then the rock perhaps broke or cracked, and then we see the, the morphing that was going on internally. That's possible, um, or the spiral is left there deliberately, maybe. That's possible as well. Mm. Like if you remember in Strange Patterns, part four of three, Redux, in that video, if you watched it, I talk a lot about the spiral and the symbolism of it. So this could be a calling card, I'll say that. Um, like they just leave it. Uh, an arbitrary spiral-like pattern behind in order to um, hint at uh, the author's uh, uh, or just to, to leave a signature or something like that. Okay. So this is an interesting rock. It's uh, on the right side here. It's, um, it's got like an upside down staircase pattern. Got some interesting knobs here, like here and here. Um, pseudo, like similar to where tusks might be on some type of animals, so that should be noted, uh, like there and there. But what I want to point out is the uh, like staircase aspect to it. See, like this angle here, and another one here, and there as well, and then underneath, and then yet another one down here, small one. So uh, natural, maybe. Um, but I want to compare it to uh, a similar thing in Saxe Waman, Peru. So just keep this uh, almost staircase-like pattern in mind. And then um, like here, here's the top of it, just kind of warpy nothingness again. So keep the staircase pattern in mind. Again, not perfect, but reminiscent of a staircase and some angular stuff going on. As we go to Saxe Waman in Peru and we check out this uh, set of upside down stairs and on the top it's just warpy rock and then um, upside down staircase. So uh, and then similar stuff all around. So it's just gibberish imposed on stone is what I'm saying and same basically same story in Fontainebleau, France rather than a bunch of petrified creatures, uh, quite possibly. So, uh, and then again, note that these stairs just lead to um, a dead end flat stone wall. So this wouldn't even make sense as a legit um, uh, architectural feature. Like if you, if you line up all the uh, features here uh, in the different orientations, like there's no way you can rotate this so that it makes sense as a former um, uh, architectural component. It's uh, internally um, inconsistent, 
like the the orient the orientations of features on this are too miscellaneous and too varied to add up to a coherent uh, picture of any former archaeological uh, or architectural uh, part of a building or something like that. So this is just nonsense in my opinion. Uh, so here's a couple different looks at that. Like you see the, like this side is very uh, well defined and smooth, but we see it like taper for no real reason. And then we've got this side curving fairly smoothly as if calculated. And then this side is flat and these stairs, which are disproportionate or like, um, let's see if we can get a good angle. Because some of these are, uh, um, irregular by design rather than by erosion, I would say. So just a few different looks here, different angles of this upside down staircase in Saxe Wiman, Peru. Like what is this? Like what are these? Just random grooves and stuff. Um, and then the melty look to the top. Slightly different, not identical obviously to the look of the rocks in uh, Fontainebleau similar. Here's the look from the side and some kind of meandering edges, like sometimes looking mechanically precise, sometimes meandering a little uh, clumsily. So kind of mechanically precise there. Maybe meandering a little bit, hard to say. But uh, just a big nothing burger in my opinion. Like, like the little stuff like this, like this little fin of, or slight ridge of rock right there, just uh, it's uh, arbitrary nonsense. And yeah, so I don't think it was an actual staircase. I think it's a, a big BS muffin. Okay, just a few different looks at it here. And then Uh, okay, and then also just to touch on, at the same site, Saxe and Wilman in Peru, we have these large uh, bits of rock with uh, like these large scale streaks of rock with these arbitrary patterns cut out. So I think we're meant to think that's like quarrying or any number of things. But again, just arbitrary patterns like uh, like all these grooves and stuff and these holes are not to be ignored, I think. These cavitations, uh, some of them may be natural, but I think some of them, at least some of them are strategic, like maybe that one, and uh, certainly these angles, and like just little little cavities like that, little, little hiccups in the pattern, I think is all part of the derp salad um, formula. So, and that formula is also in use at Fontainebleau. So again, I'm just trying to paint the picture that uh, it's a big nonsense, um, protocol. <clears throat> so this is another place at the same site in Saxe Wiman, and we're not seeing anything in uh, anything particularly as uh, angular in Fontainebleau, but um, similarly nonsensical, just in a different style. So there's many different styles of nonsense, infinitely many that could be used, and then uh, a finite but large number which is actually observed. And then here's a big, uh, big rock with random staircases and blocked, blocky angles and stuff. And then these uh, these grooves. Um, so again, just meant to bewilder, in my opinion, these cavities and holes, partial holes, indentations, whatever you want to call them. These are not byproducts of construction method, in my opinion, but rather they're just um, artificial finishing or uh, uh, add-ons to spice up the picture and make it more confusing, something like that. Uh, even this groove right here, same story. Uh, especially like stuff like this. So these little cavities 
one could imagine how this might be natural or even a, a byproduct of the construction method for these walls, but um, I'm saying it's a deliberately imposed little confusion tactic. Um, so it's, it's somewhat reminiscent of a snake, again with the uh, biological component possibly, and then uh, yeah, just um, I was going to say, these cavities are somewhat similar or uh, reminiscent of some of the cavities on the Fontainebleau rocks, just the holes and uh, grooves. And then here, I think this is the last image of Saxane Waman, we have the, the melty rock, and I think this, this like little examples like these are clues or um, hints, possibly. Like, uh, we see, like, the, look at this block. Would you ever build a block like this? And it seems to be continuous with this block anyways, like if you look at the bottom and you look at the top, like from the top it looks like two blocks, but then does it, is there a dividing line there? Or it almost looks like one rock. And then of course this like melty weird look to it. Uh, so some people would say like this got hit with a, this wall got hit with a beam weapon or some type of electro pulse or something like that. But um, I'm saying it's designed this way. Uh, from the get-go, like as a um, as a big spectacle of gibberish or uh, false narrative, false history, um, indecipherable muddle. So, uh, like you look at from here to here, like here it's kind of melty and not blocky. Here it's a little bit more regular with a almost a regular edge. Here it's got a more regular edge. So it's like a continuous blend from. Uh, mess to order over here. So here it's starting to look like a block, and then here it's more like a block, and then here it's a block. So uh, some very uh, sophisticated deception methods. So grooves and creases. So this is a more extreme example in Fontainebleau uh, in France uh, of just arbitrary artificial parallel ridges here. So in my opinion this is not natural. I could be wrong, I suppose, certainly. And in my opinion, this is not biological either. This is like uh, uh, gibberish salad or uh, pattern soup again. Um, arbitrary features for bewilderment. Um, I mean, I guess this could be like the underbelly of some type of lizard or something like that, but. Um, this isn't striking me as a, a body part. This is more striking me as um, contrived patterns imposed on the uh, the rock. So the question is why? How is important, I guess, or at least somewhat interesting. But I mean, just with high technology, that's all you really need to know. Uh, I mean, with high technology, you can do anything, really anything. You can create any pattern. Um, if the technology is high enough and if the knowledge is high enough. But um, I mean, the real impressive part of this is the effect it has on the beholder, I think. Um, and also the fact that, that we don't even notice stuff like this or we just kind of brush it off for the most part. That's pretty uh, interesting as well. This cavity, interesting, possibly natural, but maybe similar story as this. So this is kind of like the up, upside down staircase look, wouldn't you agree? Um, like especially this angle, you see these fairly regular grooves here. So I'm thinking that the artist is leaving behind clues and uh, calling cards and um, just making their antics discoverable, possibly for our benefit, or just to taunt or whatever. This one, uh, grooves and creases, let's see, um, can't really see from this angle, but from this angle we see like this, again it's a little grainy and can't really make it out, uh, I just kind of like this image, the general look of the rock and some of these grooves and layers are looking slightly odd to me, just subjectively. Okay. 
this one, I just wanted to point out over here this uh, this groove here and then this vertical groove here. It's just kind of nonsensical artificial grooves in my opinion. Okay, and then some of these contours are a little weird as well. Uh, kind of protruding features and stuff there, there. Okay, this one, so like th this hole, this hole and like this groove here, and then some of these grooves on the wall as well, like this here, uh, like these uh, grooves here, they could be natural, but, um, and then this groove here. So keep those types of grooves in mind. Then let's go back to that wall in Saxe and Waman real quick. Uh, one moment. So this one right here. So these pock marks or uh, like a series of, or string of holes uh, forming a groove. This look I would say is fairly similar to even like this down the middle here, like this one right here. I think that's not to be ignored. And then also uh, on this image we're just looking at like this crease here or this groove. I think this is bewilderment or uh, mimicked natural patterns um, and not even mimicked that well. Like they're, they're almost begging us to, uh, to tease out or to um, deduce that these are not natural, I think. So I think these are artificial pock marks. Okay, cool. Same thing with this, like pretty stark or pretty prominent. Uh, I guess could be natural, but I think it's a, a clue or pattern soup, something like that. Algorithmic barf. Okay, and then this guy, this image one more time, these creases and grooves, again with the, the holes, which may just be uh, arbitrary patterns strategically placed there to um, kind of uh, muddy the water or make a confusing overall picture. Uh, okay. This is a good image. Um, okay, so you see these creases here. I don't know whether this is the floor or the ceiling of a rock or like the top or bottom of a rock, but um, uh, we see these fairly clean seams or grooves. Those are interesting in and of themselves, but uh, if you check out here in the middle, um, the, these uh, cross hatches here. So this one in particular, like right there, it's reminiscent of like a clamp mark or uh, like an indentation where a clamp was. And so in the next image, we'll see um, just a clamp. This is a random site in like, I don't know, Greece or Egypt or India or something. And you've probably seen many of these. Um, and also Peru, we have this phenomenon of the, the clamp mark, like where an iron clamp allegedly was used. And what I'm saying is, and there never was an iron clamp, that this is just a confusing feature designed to uh, mislead and paint a, a false uh, picture and like false breadcrumbs. So uh, these indentations here, it's very faint, but it's reminiscent. So what I'm thinking is uh, um, like whatever algorithm generated all the boulders at Fontainebleau, it uh, it utilized some of the ingredients which were used to craft this nonsense as well. And uh, this is, in my opinion, nonsense. It's like not a legit way to build stuff. Um, like this groove down the middle is just a, a gibberish feature in my opinion. And it's, it's all like a weird mystery. Um, So these faint clamp marks, maybe it may just be the angle or the lighting or something, but uh, I think that's pretty damning if that's actually there and possibly a little bit here. Um, reminiscent of the clamps, not identical, obviously, but 
it's there. Okay, and then uh, let's talk about this example in uh, these creases right here. This is Fontaine Blue still, the forest. And uh, we've got these creases here and this lip right here. See how awkwardly um, almost regular or perfect or smooth this lip is? And maybe even this ridge here, somewhat similar. But uh, this little tongue of rock is what I want to focus on. And here we see as he gets to the top, you kind of see it, this line like, just kind of fade out there and stop. It's similar with this, or it kind of continues like this, but faintly. Um, so it's like a very odd uh, feature if it's natural. I would say this is an artificial hiccup, which is thrown into the mix either to uh, out themselves or uh, just by happenstance. Um, just like what it's what the algorithm generated for whatever reason. And then same thing with this hole, I would say that's probably artificial as well, or contrived. And even this flat area right here, like this uh, little uh, streaked flat area, possibly over here, and also on this edge. Some of that may be artificial, just arbitrary details, just to make a, a richer picture. Um, Okay, but getting back to this this tongue or pr uh, prong or finger of like a little lip of rock here. Um, so one more look at that. Here's the tip of it. Fairly abrupt and awkward looking, I would say. And then, so let's compare that to this place in El in, in La Drilado, Chile. So we have this lip right here. This is like a flat plane of just rock like this. And notice this area right here. So we'll zoom in in the next image. And uh, we've got this kind of similar tongue or prong of or finger of rock at the edge of this seam. So if we go back and look at this, it's kind of a similar stylistic component. And it's on the other side of the world, you know, f France right here. And then uh, Peru in this example. And we also notice like the margin, like this little flat margin here, here, and like kind of a secondary one right there. And here we see a margin like uh, a border almost between the center portion, which is kind of raised up, and then the, uh, the flatter edge, like a border around this slab of allegedly natural rock. And I'm saying that's like, that's, um, that's, 10% similar to a megalithic block or like a block that was used in the Roman walls and stuff. So, um, so where you see this in those walls, uh, like the raised center portion, I think it's called a channeled ashlar. Um, that's what I heard on uh, Quora.com. Somebody answered my question. I was trying to figure out what it's called, but this raised center portion, um, where we see it in, uh, block walls or uh, megalithic or even smaller scale walls, which are Roman or whatever, I think they're highly suspicious, um, especially since this is supposed to be a natural landscape, but it's got these nice natural contours, not to mention this abrupt line right there, um, like right there, fairly abrupt, could be natural, but this border is suspicious to me, uh, uh, reminiscent of a megalithic block, and then this lip right here just like a derpy feature, which resembles this one in uh, uh, Fontainebleau, France, somewhat, I think. Uh, and again, with this regular edge and these awkwardly clean creases. So, I think it's by the same author, is what I'm saying. So, El Enladrilado Chile, I think, was created by the same people who created the boulders in Fontainebleau, France. I've been saying that for a while now, just showing different examples of stuff and general look at the place in La Drilado. So some possible straight lines, possible arbitrary holes and edges and stuff, possible vehicle tracks going on. So it's all to be considered. And obviously it's very flat 
I think it's like a volcanic plateau or some type of plateau. Um, but it, it would surprise me if it's natural. I think these are little these little hiccups are the author's way of telling us that these areas are not natural. And so this is one such hiccup, which is not to be ignored, in my opinion. All right, let's move along. This video is very long so far. Uh, I apologize, but uh, just got to get through all these images. Okay, holes and cavities. We've already seen quite a few, but I just compiled a few images of that struck me as fairly interesting. So we've got this big hole, uh, these holes here, quasi hole cavity, um, some reminiscent of that weird rail like feature here, just kind of a weird uh, lip or fin. This is almost looking like it's meant to be placed like where an eye would be placed, and then we're meant to interpret this possibly as a beak and a jaw, you know? Uh, and then this groove here. So, uh, I think these holes and cavities are contrived largely. Uh, this one right here in particular, uh, let's see. So, this, again, this, uh, fairly smooth, uh, contour of, like, almost like a bony, uh, ridge, like an eyebrow ridge or a nasal ridge or something above this hole right here. So I think this is, um, this hole and this nice contour here are, uh, meant to, um, they're just like imposed and contrived and meant to uh, mislead and make you interpret false things or go on weird, uh, rabbit chases or chasing rabbit holes. Uh, here's a few. Like this, this hole right here, what else? This, this cavity here, here, these, these, all interesting. I would say around this, this is almost like 1%, like a megalithic arch here. See that? Not that it was a megalithic arch, but there's like some hint of a, that type of look to it, like a stone doorway. Um, so, again, just like a, derpy interpolation between these different aesthetics and then possibly these hash marks some type of artificial patterning okay here's a close-up look at a hole um not hard to imagine how this might be natural and then a secondary cavity here and possible third one there but I'm, uh i'd say there's a pretty decent chance it's artificial and this is pretty um fairly clean looking. So some of those images I was saying might be photoshopped. Um, I think might not be photoshopped just because these holes do exist in the area and they're fairly clean looking and fairly abrupt in some cases. So uh, they're not quite abrupt and clean enough to be considered like drill holes or something. But I would still say they are uh, suspicious as uh, potentially artificial. And I'm just noticing also this uh, groove here, potentially, like this edge here. Just another arbitrary detail, just to spice things up, possibly. This image, we've got these holes, many holes and grooves. Very clean. And I think the next image will be even more, yeah, this one's even more like this one, this hole, and then this flat surface here. Not to mention like these uh, fairly um, interesting uh, strokes or uh, creases or grooves here. Like it's kind of faint, but if you follow my mouse, you can see like the edge of some type of groove there. And like the flatness of this area, uh, maybe just artificial patterning. And then these grooves, I think maybe false as well, or I mean holes. And then here's a fairly deep one. This body goes all the way inside. And even this may be an arbitrary detail or a contrived detail. Here's one that goes all the way through. Nice hole there. And then this one. This one's easy to 
pass off as natural. I mean, it looks a little bit more natural than some of the other rocks. I'd say it's still probably artificial, but just my opinion. We've got this big groove here, and then these grooves kind of perforating the, the rock here. Kind of flowy. Here, nothing in particular to point out, just the general look of it. It's nice, smooth uh, cavities or uh, holes, shallow holes. All right. This image, some interesting stuff here, almost like walls here, or like straight up almost. But uh, over here, we've got some grooves and this cavity down here. Uh, interesting look to it. This image, we've got this hole, this hole back here. And then also kind of the, the layering or the segmenting of the rock, like almost like a, like tiles here, like a tile of rock. Um, so, uh, some of the layering is a little suspicious to me, so I think I'll talk about that next, if my memory serves. Okay. Um, so this one, not hard to imagine how that might be natural. Uh, just observing, showing some different examples of holes and cavities. All right. Similar deal here, just cavities, holes, hawk marks, whatever you want to call them, creases, grooves, little holes. And this one, pretty, pretty large ones, large cavities. Okay. And this image I just wanted to show down here in the lower left corner. We've got these smaller holes. Like this is almost a pattern fade, like from one type of pattern to another type of pattern. Um, I mean, that might be reading into it too much, but uh, these little holes up here and then no holes up here, like uh, just a larger, um, kind of like the bumpy look, but larger segmentation or um, coarser dimensions. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I guess this could be biological, but I think it's artificial. This image, this hole, this hole, and this crease or groove right here. And I think the time of day, like the lighting in this particular image, when this was taken, I think it makes this shadow just show up right in this groove to make it look more prominent than it is, maybe. Like, you can kind of see the shadow of the groove, inside the groove. Um, so I don't know how prominent of a feature this actually is, but it kind of looks like a, a stark groove. And this uh, lip or uh, ridge here, a little weird. Um, and these holes, yeah. So pattern fades in. Um, so there's a chance that uh, some of these patterns fade in and out, or they are, um, I guess, just kind of like how you would um, just paint a portion of a picture with a particular texture and then paint the rest of it with a different texture or technique or utensil. Um, so what I'm seeing here is like, from here to here, it's got this particular look of it, like, I don't know, like dinosaur skin or particular segmentation style or uh, borders or uh, shape to it. And here it's just like uh, featureless, more or less. Um, so it's almost like a layer of shellac has been applied over this layer or that this layer, like these two layers just blend into one, one another. Um, so here we see it. Uh, it's just a little odd to only see this pattern from here to there and not see here. It seems to maybe pick back up again there. So it's like, what is this rock here? Like uh, petrified mud that was laying on top of it for a while. That could be like a natural thing. Um, 
and there's a chance that it's also just derp, like arbitrary details, or just quirky, quirky details. And similar creases over here a little bit. Hmm. That's tough to say. Okay, and then um, this image, it's a little grainy and low resolution, but uh, similar story here, like uh, this uh, pattern emerging here, this texture, and then it seems to be either obscured or absent uh, in the surrounding areas. So um, could be just an artistic hiccup um, by the tooler. Or it could be a natural thing, I suppose. And then on the other corner of the block, the opposite corner over here, we have a um, similar type of thing, like the, the bumpy pattern we've seen. But then um, maybe it's just the angle or the lighting. We can't see the discern the rest of the image, but it seems to be absent there and like here. So it's like only this corner seems to be affected. That may be a stretch or making uh, too strong of conclusions from too little data, but I don't seem to see the bumpiness over here, right? And maybe this just this area is oriented more exposed to weather or something like that. Um, same thing with this corner, maybe it's more exposed, so some of the rock erodes away or something like that. I don't know. Um, just observing, considering possibilities. Okay, let's talk about flat surfaces or layering, um, or actually uh, layering a little bit later, but flat surfaces right now. So um, so this potentially flat surface, again, like looking like it joins up with this surface a little abruptly. And we also have this like awkward um, feature here, like a little sweep there with an angle there. Then we have this kind of uh, linear or um, this kind of flat ledge here. So uh, yeah, it's kind of an awkwardly flat ledge with like an artificial like little swoopty there with a squared off end there. Then a nice flat surface there. Uh, I could imagine this flat surface being natural. This is a little more awkward here in this ledge. So tough to say. One more look at this image, this very flat um, look to it. Maybe it was exposed by weather or something or uh, uh, this part was protected by the ground or something like that over a long period of time and for whatever reason the erosion affected this surface but not this surface or vice versa or something like that. But we do see this like sweep mark here or uh, this groove, this and I think that's comparable to this right here. Just like a artificial like so something with these flat surfaces and sweep marks possibly and then uh, this cliff side here what do we got just kind of like a plastery look almost like flattened edge I don't know how that would be accomplished any number of ways I guess could be also just natural um, accruing of uh, or accumulation of uh, material uh, over the eons or whatever like peeling away or something like that but it's uh, interesting to observe. And it resembles this canyon in Australia called King's Canyon, Australia. And it has this flat kind of melty look to it. Oops. So this flat look with the eroding flatness and we see the layers underneath. Uh, so I suspect that this canyon is artificially sculpted as well. So we have these flat surfaces kind of peeling away almost. And then this one in the background, you see um, like this, again, the sweep or scoopy sweep mark. And I suppose that could be natural, but uh, like, again, we see these vertical possible tick marks there and uh, the sweep here. And then the flat, almost plaster like surface. So uh, I do wonder and then one more look here, just the flatness of it. You get a half decent look here, the smooth flat look, uh, which may be artificial in my opinion. So back to that uh, boulder in Fontainebleau. Uh, just this portion of it right here, seemingly similar. So 
Could be a natural feature, could be freaking artificialness. Okay. Let's move along. And here we have um, this uh, flat floor look to it. So some of the uh, the bedrock or the, um, the level ground, the stone in not just Fontainebleau but many areas has a kind of a contrived look to it. I would say it's almost like a playground or like designed to look like a floor or to act as a floor. Um, so this nice little layer of flat-ish rock um, and it kind of meets this boulder somewhat abruptly like this fairly linear thing continuing under there. Uh, I don't know. I mean, crap. It, seem, it seems like a flat platform almost, or flattish. I suspect some element of contrivedness behind it. And layering. So we have big uh, cliff sides and stuff which have the layering in front, front and blue and boulders which are layered like this. In this image we see the flat surface, vertical surface of the rock or just the edge of the cliff side here, or this mini cliff, and then we get a good look at the natural layering or presumably natural layering of the rock layers and uh, of the bedrock. And I would say looking right here, like if we have this warped stuff, which I'm saying is probably artificial, then what about this, like just underneath it? And then what about this just underneath that and this here? So the question is what's natural and what's um, edited? Um, so like what's pre-existing before this tooling project and what's... Uh, uh, what's edited uh, after, like what's sculpting of what's there. So like, th was this natural bedrock, was that there and then it was sculpted into boulders like this? Or is it all like artificial sculpting? And um, I'm just gonna guess, cause I don't know obviously, but I'm guessing that there's some artificial sculpting of the bedrock or like a lot of these areas like this and this I'm saying are artificial. Now how deep that goes, I don't know, but I think it goes at least to here, at least the ex exposed areas and then some, some depth beneath the surface I would guess as well is uh, where the artificial activity extends to. So in this image, let's take a look at this. So we've got these layers right here, or um, at least cracks or fissures, and then they seem to just abruptly stop. Like, um, why would why would there be layering here, but not um, here? Like, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Like, right right at these points, it just uh, kind of stops. Um, same thing like. Uh, over here, we've got this nice natural looking crease, which just kind of fades out into a non feature or just it's not there anymore. So it's like partial layers, which just kind of fade out here, which may be again, a deliberate clue or something like that. And um, could also just be natural. I mean, Maybe it's not layers, maybe it's cracks or something. But uh, I suspect all this pancaking or the, the layering here is um, artificial actually in nature. This one looking kind of oddly shaped here. But uh, in a moment we'll see some man-made stuff and we'll see some kind of blendy areas which are looking like half man-made and half natural. And this would be more towards the natural end, but that doesn't mean it's not artificial. Okay, so more pancaking here. 
creases like this, just a short little crease. Could be an exposed portion of a underlying uh, seam in the rock, or could just be arbit like superficially imposed on the surface there. Uh, and then just a general look at the um, the layering here, the um, the bedding layers of the bedrock, and see like right here. See how this is one layer, but then right here it's two layers. So I just wonder why that is, and I my guess is that it's the the scrambling or the MK ultraing or the the discombobulation at work just mapped to the domain of uh, this particular stretch of bedrock or this general area as well. Um, yeah. Okay, I don't, I guess I don't have much to say on this image, just a good general look. Same thing here. Uh, this is more of a standalone boulder when we get a look at the ha kind of haphazard uh, crackly, cracking and layering of it, likely artificial, maybe natural. This one's a good good one because it's like, it's got the warped look to it, of the, the quasi-biological look to it, and then it's also got these layers, so these cracks or creases, like right there's one, and then here, and here, and here, these seams or uh, cracks or layers. So I think these are all artificial features. And I think that principle extends deep down into the bedrock to, uh, to a degree. So here's another look at the general landscape here. Kind of, I guess, limestone, uh, uh, sandstone maybe, I'm not quite sure, but this, this is the bedrock and we see nice and flat here, which could be artificially flattened or whatever. And then a nice little cave in there, and good look at the layers, and fairly flat along this vertical edge here, which is a little odd, maybe. Um, and then uh, I want to compare it to this cave in uh, Australia, the Nullarbor Plain, which we looked at in the sheared flat land videos. Um, it's just there's a resemblance here, not that it's not natural, maybe both of them are natural, just um, worth comparing just because the the look of the rock potentially related somehow. Uh, yeah. So there's that. Just caves and stuff. Alright, so let's talk about man-made stuff in the Fontainebleau area. I think Fontainebleau is a fairly uh, uh, robust city. Uh, not It's not just a forest, it's also like a, a city next to the forest and there's all, all kinds of history and large buildings and pretty uh, built out area. But uh, in the forest there's man-made stuff too, like this guy. Um, so this is a good image of uh, obvious man-made stuff or so we're made to assume. And then this is like, okay, well, they, they're kind of layered almost like blocks, but I mean, is this the natural bedrock? And like, why, like, what about these over here? Are these large boulders or uh, these boulders are blocks? You know what I mean? Bedrock or blocks. So. I would say it's not always clear where one ends and the other begins. Like I would say this is a some kind of a halfway type of feature like even the the bedrock ground right here. I think this is all like uh, high technology just whipping up all of this at once um, with multiple different looks to make it deceptive. Uh, so this layering is slightly odd just I wonder whether it's like a just a, a variation on this type of pattern over here and same basic idea over here and first of all what is the structure even in the first place and why would they go to all this effort to make it I mean that's a lot of stone and a lot of shaping of stone so I don't think it's necessarily a legit site um, and then
then here, similar thing, like these blocks are like pretty huge. Like this looks like a block right there, but then this right here, what is this? Is this flattened bedrock or sculpted bedrock? We've got this crack almost like the top of a block, but it just kind of fades out there. And this kind of almost possible machine marks, tooling marks. Um, and then this like this mess over here. So we've got obvious blocks here, but like down here, it's all kind of a blur. Um, like right here ish. And like, what is this? Is that mortar or something? It just looks like a melty, sloppy block. And that's a lot of what you see with these is like sloppy um, feature bleed between the, the mortar or the filler material and the blocks themselves. And uh, it's kind of all one. In, in some cases, they're like even connected, but just made to look like multiple pieces. Like here, it kind of looks like multiple little blocks, like fused maybe. Um, so I'm guessing all of this is by the same hand, but, uh, um, just with slightly different aesthetics, uh, at, at play here, just using, using different tools in its toolbox to make, uh, a confusing overall picture. And again, if this is an, uh, conventional, uh, a, a site that is, uh, created for conventional modern purposes or just like uh, man's exploits or whatever like a thousand years ago or two thousand years ago or whatever 500 even it's it's like it's a lot of work to do all this with no tools like I don't understand why you would go to all this trouble or like no no power tools and stuff okay so here's a cool example of a boulder and this portion of the boulder, I would say, looks about 2% brick-like, or almost like a brick wall. Um, and I just kind of chose an arbitrary percentage there, but uh, you kind of get the idea, like, like right here, almost like the grooves in between bricks. But this is clearly a boulder. So, like, this is like a truth drop right here, just like telling you hey, some of the walls and boulders are like basically the same thing. <laughs> it's basically just um, a big uh, hodgepodge of rock material, which is uh, shaped into different forms in a non-genuine way or in a sneaky way. Um, so hopefully you can agree that this kind of looks like a block or a stone, stone block. And these are kind of shaped like that. Um, could be natural, I guess, and just coincidence, or just the angle or something like that, the angle of the photo. But uh, it looks like one of those half of this and half of that instances. Okay. And then stairways in the area. Um, I've talked a little bit about trails, like nature trails and stuff in national parks and how they might be related to this as well. Like just f uh, like high technology, just uh, w ripping through the landscape, like leaving uh, a trail behind as part of the overall uh, end product or end look of the landscape. Um, so we've got this kind of these grooves and the, the warpy looking rock, right? Which we've seen a lot of. And then there's this, these stairs, and it's not clear to me how these are crafted, whether they're modern or not. They're kind of warpy as well and uneven. So is it like trail makers within the last couple hundred years just choosing random stones and slightly cutting them into place to fit this area? Um, or I also suspect that this is all brought into being at once, the whole, the whole area, with the stairs just have, having a slightly different look to them. Um, this, this warpy, um, uneven stone step thing is a very common thing. And, uh, I don't know, generally, uh, we try to build flat floors if we walk on them, but I mean, maybe, maybe the bar is a little lower 
in nature areas because it's not a big deal to walk on uneven terrain. But um, I don't know, again, it's just a spidey senses thing. Just uh, and then a zoom here, a decent look at the rock. Um, so whatever it is, I suspect is uh, well. I suspect it's artificial weirdness, but it could be modern. Even like more uh, regular staircases like this, I uh, I think are contrived like by the same thing which did all the boulders maybe like um, like we see these uh, the indications of wear some of that is probably genuine for sure just because who knows how long this has been here however it was created but um, I rather suspect that some indications of wear are just pre pre etched into the the form as it's created so like it's brought into being with prior indications of wear, um, like falsely. Uh, so like the, the groove down the middle or like the worn down middle um, and the kind of haphazard, uh, slightly uneven form. And like, let's see, like kind of, hard, kind of hard to tell, but it almost looks like these are like all one piece, you know, like it's just like a curve, like carved. Like how, how, how are we going to carve this? I don't think it's like a legit lost civilization that did this, like with high technology. I think it's rather a trickster that did this with high technology to just make a weird staircase for some, for their, whatever their purposes are. And here's another look at it. And, oops. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Anything to point out? No, just, just basically the same deal, more of the same. Okay. And then there's this site at uh, either in in the Fontainebleau forest or nearby. But we have this big, thick bedrock with this very uh, awkward wave or contour, and then this flat, kind of angular, blocky edge to this side of it, and then this fairly clean edge here of this giant boulder here, and then all this rock. So we're, we're meant to believe this was like quarried or like uh, like these smaller blocks were chipped away by Romans with chisels or something like that. I don't know. I just don't buy that. And plus it's, it's only like half a wall. Like this isn't a complete structure. That's another thing we see, we observe a lot of just like a, a half structure like false remains of something it's just it's half of a structure and it never was a full structure in my opinion um or my best guess and uh yeah it's just stacks of rocks like it's somewhat random and uh awkward kind of like the stacked stone walls of ireland and the stacked rocks of africa the stone circles so this is just a variation on that i think just like stacked rocks that look like that paint a, a, a confusing picture of our past or a belittling picture you know to make us feel small or uh, discombobulated in the face of our impressive past or something like that um, but it's kind of a an overall effect of confusing overwhelmingness and I think this is all just a, a, a kit or a the whole site is basically like a prop like a theatrical prop to uh, to set a frame more or less and um, same thing here like you're not gonna build this like this if you're a serious build so let me get this straight you're gonna go to all this work to craft all these stone blocks and then you're gonna slap them together like this <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't think that uh, that's too consistent and then, like, the, the structure's not even functional on top of that. Like, what does it do? Like, there's holes in it. It doesn't... I mean, you can just climb over it if you're an invader or something like that. And I think all these invader stories are blown out of proportion. Like, yeah, you had to protect yourself, but I don't think all these giant stone structures were 
for that purpose. I think they're just uh, false props. Okay, so just looking at the variation of the boulders, like, mm, I'm, I guess, well, I don't have a close-up look, so I'm not seeing any tool marks. Maybe there are some tool marks. Not that they're legitimate tool marks, but um, not clear how these blocks came into being. But whatever story we're told, I wouldn't buy it. Um, and then the the next layer up of uh, possibility, or most next most likely, would be like, okay, it's the remains of a lost civilization. But I, I don't buy that either because of the discrepancy between the ability to work with stone and then what they did with that stone. So they're making these huge, impressive moves with stone uh, and cuts and all that and then they just slap it together into a, a pile of crap like no that doesn't make much sense so I don't think that stands up so this is just circumstantial evidence in my opinion uh, not to be ignored uh, which possibly lends uh, some contextual understanding to the um, origin of the animal shaped boulders so if this is uh, deceptive structure, then we might imagine that the, the boulders are deceptive as well, like the same type of program going on. Here's a less impressive wall, but possibly similar uh, backstory to it. And a lot of like stone walls intertwined with the ground in interesting ways like little hobbit holes and stuff, not just necessarily here, but everywhere. It's like, a, again, the, the mishmashing of um, explanations and aesthetics and uh, everything, basically, just to create a, a rich, confusing tapestry and interesting and fun, possibly, but... Um, yeah, like the, all the underground stuff is... Uh, I think has a theatrical prop component to it. So again, here we have these littler rocks and then these massive blocks on top. So first of all, how did they move these? So they didn't obviously, but so is it uh, ancient civilization did this? Like, oh, like the, the Atlanteans or somebody, you know, but um, I don't think so. I think this is just derpy uh architecture salad or building salad this is like a very uh clumsy whimsical um like uh variant of uh something humans would build so it's kind of like a toontown at disneyland or just like a a cartoonified version of a, a rock dwelling um like the whole uh, superstitious thing, and these were like um, aligned, like for astrological alignments, or uh, f or for like s sacrifices or um, tributes to the gods or whatever, or burial chambers or any of that. I'm not buying any of that. Like, um, and I'm, I'm also not buying that ancient civilization. Like this is the remnants of an old civilization. No, this is a this is a prop. I think it's just like a big dildo. Um, okay, like the hugeness of the boulders, and why are they on top? Like, like how did they build this? You know, maybe the boulders are like an overhang naturally and then they just stack some rocks to make it kind of make shift makeshift shelter out of it that makes more sense to me um, like this this does kind of make sense so I'll, I'll give you that um, then there's areas where you have like better craftsmanship like right here and maybe right there still the uh, the huge boulders overhead and the open ceiling, like, what, did you want to get rained on or what? <laughs> like, it's not clear what, what this function was. I'm just saying it's just functionless. Um, yeah. Anyways, yeah, another look at it there. Similar stuff. So there's something called a grotto, G-R-O-T-T-O. -T -T -O. 
It's basically just like an underground rock structure uh, carved into the rock, basically. And there's some grottos in this Fontaine Blue area. And they, um, it's, I'm, I'm just gibberish salad in my opinion. Uh, I've basically already stated my opinion on it. And these inscriptions, a lot of these, I suspect, may be non-legitimate. Some of them at least. So here's one of those grottos, a grotto, a oh, Christian, blah, blah, blah. Um, so this one's off limits. It's just like a nice wall here, whether artificial or natural or weird mixture. And then like these cuts and it's just like a nonsensical uh, stone uh, cavity. And it doesn't serve much of a purpose. Here we have these nice little walls and underground Dooley Bobber. Uh, and remember some of the weirdness at Machu Picchu. This is kind of reminiscent of that, like just the, the kind of uh, windy walls and uh, windy ceilings and stuff. Just kind of like a hodgepodge. Yeah. So here's a view from inside. Shelter, maybe. I don't know. And this one's like, I don't know, like a cemetery or something, or a, a grave, or maybe a tribute or something. I don't know what this says, but I suspect that this is part of it as well, like the uh, um, the human affairs aspect of the whole program. Like, it's it's a big uh, symbols and symbols and crests and uh, and traditions. And all kinds of things are used in a kind of uh, gibberishy, derpy manner, like pseudo-sensical or like to establish a false frame or false context um, or sense of context. Like, I don't, I don't know that this is a legit site. Um, and it may be, maybe this rock area is artificial but this is like legitimate human activity like afterwards that's certainly possible but i just i'm guessing now and yeah some about these graves i don't know like look how perfect the font is i mean like carved into the rock i don't know i'm, I'm a little under researched on a lot of stuff i know that it's a a flaw of mine but I uh, uh, I uh, uh I don't know I think I can we can get pretty far with um, just being as resourceful as we can with the potential explanations and uh, leaving the door open for certain things okay uh, Fontaine Durley Okay, and then just the look of the rock, like, would you go to all this effort to build um, a, uh, whatchamacallit, a grave back in the day? I just think how much work this would have been without power tools and stuff. Okay, and then a couple of rocks in the area have, the, like, these spiral or maze-like uh, squiggle patterns. So uh, either that's modern stuff or it's, like, etched... Um, this could be modern artwork, maybe, but, uh, if it's not, then I would say there's a chance that it's, um, along the same lines as the, uh, strange patterns, symbol soup type argument discussed in, uh, strange patterns, part four of three video. Uh, so just like variations on the spiral and miscellaneous patterns as a calling card or way of, uh, you know, drawing attention or uh, sounding the alarm to the true nature of the site. Okay. Um, and then some buildings like this, like this, uh, I don't know what you call it, this monument thing, a gravestone or... Uh, commemor commemorative, whatchamacallit, monolith or whatever. See it in relation to the, these people. So it's probably like 30, 40 feet high. And again, 
a lot or most of architecture in general, I think, is bogus to a certain extent. But uh, I guess I'll talk more about that later. Um, and then here's another spot. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if this is all um, part of the, the whole protocol or something like that, like a prop, but there's a chance it's legit. Um, I don't know. I don't have too many good images of this particular site, so I can't get in detail and like start looking for particular holes and stuff, but uh, just the feel of it and the, the look of the stone, uh, I don't think... Uh, my best guess is that it's more akin to a prop or a, a seated aesthetic than a legitimate aesthetic. Okay, so um, let's go to a couple different sites for reference. Uh, I want to point out some similarities uh, between uh, Fontainebleau, some of the artificial features we were just looking at, and also uh, some of these uh, anomalies with these walls. So um, in Spain we have what's called the Walls of Lugo, basically like many kilometers of this very impressive wall. And if you want to read the description, it's constructed, it's constructed third century, largely intact, two kilometers, blah, blah. Okay. And then the main point I want to make is the scars across the stone. Now, how much sense does that make if you really stop and think about it? Okay, so how would the scar get there? Was it um, during a battle and some type of uh, trebuchet weapon like skidded up the side here? Um, I don't know that it would create such a deep, clean groove in the stone. I think it would leave like a, a black marking here at best, you know, like that, or like a scorch mark. But these are like deep, clean grooves. Oh, okay, so maybe these were quarried from the same uh, bedrock area, and they just happen to be contiguous, um, or quarried from the same piece of bedrock. Possible, but... Um, Given the haphazard nature of the way the stones are arranged, I don't think that they would have quarried it from the same piece of um, bedrock with with a, a flawed uh, groove in it and then arranged them all back next to each other. I don't think they would have cared whether they were next to each other. You know? Um, like, uh, there's, there's kind of an element of precision simultaneous with with like lack of precision. It's so, like it's kind of overall precisely um, configured, but um, or like it all stacks together nicely. Um, but then there's like a meandering, uh, like this is a nice straight line, and then this is like a very sloppy uh, meandering line. Um, and we have odd shapes to these, some of these blocks. Some of them are polygonal, as you'll see some very awkward holes, so the, the random holes everywhere are um, a dead giveaway in my opinion, as are the grooves. So um, I'm saying these grooves are like a, a clue or a calling card again, and we saw some similar grooves in Fontainebleau, I would say, on some of the boulders, not identical, but similar. Here's another variation on that, slightly different uh, stonework here, same uh, place walls of Lugo in Spain and these grooves and this does not look like a legit damage pattern to me this is just a, an imposed uh, construction flaw which is um, be pretty hard to do I mean unless you're creating this wall with high technology um, to make it look like it was made with low technology but I, I think this Stuff like this groove are a, um, a giveaway that this is not a legit wall. Um, so I would challenge you to come up with a decent explanation for how a groove like this could form by conventional means. And, uh, I mean, it could be some, like, rock-eating bacteria or something which just uh, went along a single linear path <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but uh, here's another example of it. Uh, three, three curves right here. 
just the way it kind of ducks into these uh, this upper uh, secondary rock style and um, like what caused these three grooves they're just random features is what I'm saying or more or less random uh, not to mention all these holes 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 awkward polygonal angles and stuff so the grooves again are like a catch and throw of uh, uh, calling cards okay and then just another angle there uh, just three grooves randomly non-functional okay and then here's a more modern building so here we have a modern building and check this out right here uh, we've got this groove this nice clean groove across multiple blocks now why would that be like is that a, a, a construction flaw like an accident like the saw skipped or something like that um, or like an imperfection in the stone and then they just happen to be mined from the same piece of bedrock which was cut um, I think rather than it being an imperfection in the stone it was uh, quarried from I think it's just an arbitrary feature imposed to let you know that <laughs> these, these these entire uh, any anything with this look to it is basically bullshit <laughs> like non um, non legit structures so there's the idea that structures like all this stuff are like Tartarian or something were left behind from a previous civilization that's been uh, overwritten or re um, rebranded but I don't buy that because uh, because of stuff like this this scar like it's it doesn't make much sense how it got there like who's who's putting scars or if that's some type of accident like what's a legit accident that could cause this scar and then like what's this hole or like this random like derpy thing here so it's this random hodgepodge look which gives itself away um, just letting you know like just telling you by its own design that it's um, it's a, a big bullshit uh, parade um, okay this is also in Spain different location walls of Tarragona so Tarragona Spain and uh, see this look here on the lower portion I would say is quite similar to some of the stuff we see at Fontainebleau and um, that could be because both are from natural rocks but if you just look at the way the the rocks are kind of like half block half bedrock almost um, it's just like a, a big mess and we're made to believe that that's just because it's old and eroding but if you look at some of the, the crisp holes and the, the contours that remain and um, the grooves it's all a very awkward whole uh, picture um, so uh, let's keep moving different angle here same corner and got that groove there which is similar to, somewhat to the grooves we see on some of the boulders in Fontainebleau and then anything else not to mention all the random rectangular holes everywhere which is a uh, another calling card or giveaway in my opinion and just the haphazard shapes of all the stones this one right here like again like kind of kind of like bedrock but it's very sloppy and also right here like look at this uh, this weird corner like they they made the top of the block flat but then they were like no let's make a let's make the the corner of the block stick up like this unless it it's like a this part of the block broke off and then they just stuck a little piece in there and we just can't see the seam but I don't know about that okay uh, let's move on so in the same city there's this portico of Terraco basically just a freestanding uh, uh, portion of a gate or wall and we see these grooves again so look at this groove how much sense does that make how much sense does this groove make 
Erosion, I don't know, would erosion like do a clean groove like that? Like stopping and, and picking up again over here and all the square holes and stuff. Um, so just a few different looks here. I'll cover this more later in future videos, but um, I just want to point out the general look of the stone and I just want to make the point that there's a lot of different derpy features which are used to uh, um, to out the the gibberish or the nonsense or the uh, uh, non-genuine um, aspect of these sites. And right here, actually, it's kind of hard to make out in this photo, but right here, it's actually a sperm or a sperm looking thing, like uh, raised out of the stone. Um, so it's just like a general shit show. Uh, it's pretty funny, actually, I think. Good look at the stone. And I'm pretty sure whatever technology we're dealing with can just make whatever kind of stone it wants or whatever type of pattern. It's got every, every tool at its disposal. And then we see the, the nice clean uh, nature of the groove here, crisp. And like, why would it look like that? Like, did they build it like that? Um, like, it just doesn't make any sense, nor do these holes make any sense. Um, it's just a meandering groove. Is it damage? Why would, why would uh, a damage pattern go like this? Water erosion? Uh, maybe, but it's looking very similar to the the scars on the walls of Lugo in Spain that we were just looking at, and um, awkward holes and stuff. Yeah, so weird slits and miscellaneous tool marks and stuff. So yeah, this curve here, or uh, what do you call it, uh, groove. And I, I, so what I'm saying is this, uh, um, this whole portico of Terraco or this standing doorway, it's not a remnant of a structure. Um, I mean, I guess it may be, but the structure wasn't legit, but I think more, more likely is, uh, this is just built like as a, as a false ruin or like as a theatrical prop and with plenty of uh, details which let you know that by implication. Like this, what is this? Look at that. Like, what is that conjure? It's nothing. It's non-functional. So this is a non-functional, like, uh, imitation of a historical artifact or a historical remnant of a wall. But it's, it's just a prop, I think. So a few different looks here, all the, uh, um, the holes and stuff. So why am I bringing this up in the large biology episode? Um, just connecting dots and um, I'm making the point that uh, this uh, random holes and random grooves thing is a pretty ubiquitous thing and it's uh, indicative of uh, tomfoolery or deception or bogus sites. And I think we s saw some fairly clean holes, not quite to this degree or not quite the same aesthetic, some fairly clean holes and grooves in the fontaine blue boulders so i think that's evidence that the fontaine blue boulders may be artificial in nature rather than um, organic biological uh, objects so um, so i was considering that they might be organic biological objects but i think that's less likely than that artificial explanation. And then here's the back side. We have another, yet another big long scar like this, just a nice clean groove down the whole side of it. So, I mean, do you think that's an, a legit damage pattern? I don't think so. Um, do you think it's functional? I don't think so. Um, so it's, it's so funny that stuff like that escapes our notice. You know, people just walk by it. Uh, okay, and then more of the rear, just this big, very deep groove here. Um, and not to mention all the holes. So we have more uh, uh, rectangular, regular holes like this. We also have holes like this and like that and everything in between, all kinds of variations. So just because a hole is not um, regular 
like a hole or cavity doesn't mean it's not artificial. I think we have all kinds of variations going. Okay, just one more look. Derpy angles and surfaces, just a nonsensical show. And one more look, see the nice clean edge of it there. Uh, the groove, just an arbitrary imposed feature just to make it uh, confusing and or uh, as a calling card and or to um, out themselves or for like for karmic purposes or whatever um, or like as a joke or something like that anyways so back to um, a couple images from font and blue so like look at all this artificial weirdness going on here then look at this uh, boulder which does have the biological um, aesthetic to it but then it's got these clean grooves to it which I think are um, a uh, a s subtle but not so subtle way of telling you what this boulder is or at the very least scrambling your brain <laughs> um, and possibly some uh, like uh, combined multi multi-purpose um, reason behind it so like there may be multiple reasons why this looks like this and it may be may all be managed by some supercomputer and something like that so yeah these artificial grooves and stuff like this rem reminiscent of this groove here somewhat not identical but i would say it's worth worth considering at least so are we dealing with artificial grooves here and does that mean the whole rock's artificial i think it implies that that's just my opinion the, again, similar grooves here. Like, I think these grooves look kind of phony, almost. Like, almost like a fake rock. Uh, even this groove here, this faint one, or this right there. Possibly similar uh, shit show kind of look to it. Just, I mean, definitely different, slightly, but... Or significantly different, but... Um, similar enough to... Uh, at least make some suppositions. Okay, and then again with these seams, these these grooves here, um, artificial shit, and this lip here, just nonsensical, um, quasi natural looking artificial stuff, like a mixture of aesthetics and all that. Again here, this guy with the lines here another one here so the idea of the shit show of lines and the hodgepodge of lines and contours lines contours angles holes grooves all this stuff in a um as like ingredients in a, a uh, an algorithm which kind of just spits out these um fascinating mysterious structures which are potentially just meant to be mysterious and never resolve to anything um, or to any legit explanation so and then these waves again reminiscent of the the grooves um, on that some of those walls uh, at least a little bit yeah, this one and this one especially just a deep groove a w very weird lip um, not to mention the hole possibly and that is it for Fontaine Blue. So hopefully I didn't bore you to death. Um, hopefully uh, you tune in for the next video. <laughs> um, okay, I know that was a long one. Uh, we're slogging through it. Thanks for watching. And uh, I think the next video I will uh, touch on the... Uh, phenomenon of the large petrified hair uh, continuing on the large biology topic. So, uh, okay. Catch you later. Bye.